CBC Radio Canada now costs Canadians $32 per year, less than $3 a month. In fact, now is precisely the time we should be investing more in public broadcasting, not less. Talk with Canadians who depend on us during a pandemic, wildfires, or floods to find out what they need to know to protect their families. Bear right to it. Uh, Ms. Tate, would you categorize your term at the CBC as a success? Yes. Uh, so you believe that you've left it in a better place than how you found it? Absolutely. Okay. So if I just go through a, f a few things, and I just have to say, you must have uh, quite the echo chamber there if you, if you believe that, because, uh, you know, uh, when we're talking about how out of touch the CBC can be with Canadians, you only need to look at the bonuses that you paid out during an affordability crisis to executives and senior management while laying off the frontline staff, something that even Peter Mansbridge called uh, the CBC out for. Um, when we look at all the metrics, all the key performance indicators, ad revenue overall down, trust is down, despite polls that the CBC might have commissioned for itself. Uh, independent third party organizations that analyze this indicate that trust in the CBC fell 17% in just four years. Viewership is down, less than 3% in primetime markets. That means during prime time, when, when, when Canadians are getting into living rooms to watch what is on TV, 97% of Canadians say no to the CBC, tune it out, and move on to other things. Based on all of that, Ms. Tate, I just want to say, on behalf of the Conservative Party, I want to thank you for your efforts in helping us promote the campaign to defund the CBC. Because I think outside of the Conservative Caucus, uh, you have been the most successful person in creating the demand to defund the CBC. $1.4 billion of taxpayers' money doesn't go for an online streaming service. It goes to a whole host of products in which Canadians are choosing other sources of information and entertainment. So again, I don't really have a question there. I just wanted to say thank you for your efforts to help us defund the CBC. Did you have a comment? I must say that it really does shock me the extent to which certain members of this committee and, and SUPS in, or whatever you call it, um, seem to make me the target um, and throw insults to my um, tenure at CBC Radio Canada um, in order to discredit the organization. The organization has stood for 90 years, and we know 79% of, of Canadians say they believe that CBC Radio Canada should continue. And so to, to have this be a, somehow a, um, a, you know, a proof that, uh, that, def that we should be defunding the CBC is ridiculous. State. Uh, so I understand Mr. Kurek is not sharing with yeah. you. Go ahead, Mr. Scher. just want to point out that those were not insults. Uh, it may be insulting to hear that ad revenue is down, but that is just a fact. It may be insulting to hear that 97% of Canadians choose to watch other things on TV other than the CBC, but that is just a fact. It is just a fact that trust in the CBC has fallen by 17% in just four years. Uh, when I had a chance to ask you about trust in the CBC, uh, one of your responses back was that uh, corrections were up, that the number of corrections that the CBC News issued is up, and that was a proof, uh, some kind of evidence, that the CBC could be trusted. I look at it the other way. When you have uh, a falsehood broadcast on the national news, and then a correction that follows up a few days later uh, or, or on, a, on an online argue, uh, uh, post, that, that doesn't instill confidence and trust in the CBC. It points out that the CBC allows things to get to air before doing proper vetting, validation, and fact-checking. And it may be insulting to hear the dollar amounts about executive bonuses, but I'll tell you who was really insulted. The frontline workers that were laid off when the CBC was claiming it didn't have enough money to keep that entire workforce, and then reads in the paper, or reads on a news source other than the CBC, because they probably weren't watching it either, that senior management and executive all got bonuses. So again, those are just facts. It's, it's the, the, everything I have, I have listed off comes seconds. from third-party independent sources that have indicated all that. And so I just want to again say thanks for your help in our efforts to defund the CBC. Mr. Kevin. Five minutes. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Ms. State, for appearing, uh, as you said, fifth time in 12 months. Uh, two months ago, the CBC, your organization, said the ad revenues were down, and you've stated today that that is the case. Last year at this time, your organization made the biggest staff reduction ever. So since, and you've admitted this, 1.4 billion of public funding accounts goes to the CBC, now we know the ad revenue is down, which makes up, I think, 30% of the commercial activities for the corporation. Are you planning then any staff reductions in the month ahead? There are a couple of things I'd like to correct, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, the biggest job reduction ever in the previous 10 years before I arrived at CBC, there were over 1,000 jobs cut at CBC Radio-Canada. The net loss of jobs in the six and a half years that I have served is actually 90. Because by the way, we also create new jobs. We're talking here about 141 occupied positions that were okay. lost. So let's, let's not, let's not um, okay, move on let's deal with facts here. Um, in terms of TV ad revenue, I have said repeatedly... Yeah, we know that. Okay, so what is your question? My question <laughs> is, are you going to reduce staff like you did last year in December? The private sector has already started staff reductions, yes. as you know. You used... You, last year, you followed them in the month of December. Are you going to do that again? So I will say very, and I can say this very openly to this committee, that thanks to the $42 million that we received, we will deliver the budget for 24-25, which ends in March, without further staff reductions. You said at the beginning you need more funding. You said that in your opening five-minute statement. Have you asked the minister or any of the Liberal cabinet ministers for more funding going ahead? for 24-25? Since I began this job in 2018, I have been asking all stakeholders. I have met with ministers. I have met with um, uh, MPs from both sides, all sides of the table, to talk about the structural financial challenges that CBC Radio-Canada faces. I just described how with $32 per head, yeah. we're delivering enormous value. And I have been speaking about the need for more funding. How much it more? I started with, and I think I said so to uh, Deputy Champoux, we need in the four to $500 million range to, to have sustainable, um, uh, manageable funds to have a vibrant, uh, robust service. I mean, I, I, I just if I may, this talk about TV revenues yeah. being down. Do you think that CBC Radio Canada or Radio Canada alone can compete with billions of dollars from the streamers like Netflix and Amazon? Well, let me it's ask impossible. you this. Your key performance indicators, which you have not met, and I think that's why the public is a little upset with the bonuses. You only have met three of the 14. You admitted here last time you moved the goalposts so that you could get the KPIs. I think that's why taxpayers in this country are upset with you and the CBC board right now. You've moved the KPIs so you could get the $18.3 million in bonuses and over $3 million in executive bonuses. That is the issue with the CBC right now, Ms. Tate, which you appear to not read the public on this. Well, they I, are I'm, upset I'm, with you on this. I'm very sorry. You're misrepresenting the I'm facts. Not. Yes, you are. I'm very sorry, Madam Chair. We do not move the goalposts. You our admitted KPIs, it last time. Our KPIs uh, are based on market debate. data. Can you allow the witness to answer the question you asked, Kevin? It's like football. You've moved the goalposts so you could get your KPIs so that you could get the $18 million in bonuses. We all know that. You've admitted that in previous testimony at the Canadian Heritage Year. And that's not. why Canadians are upset. Ms. Tate, know? Ms. Tate, please answer the question. I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chair. I have been uh, um, asked the same questions over and over again. I have answered the questions. If the purpose of this uh, appearance is to simply um, uh, throw a barrage of insults in my direction I am, uh, if, to discredit the organization. It I'll is totally on. unproductive. Miss Tate, I'll move on. You've got 
Olympic contract for have one minute, thank one you. second, Mr. One second or one, one second. minute? One second. Oh, I'm done then. Thank you. you know, I find it interesting in your opening statement. Um, you, 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 you didn't mention the $18 million in bonuses that were paid out. And certainly when I speak to and hear from thousands of Canadians. Uh, point of order, um, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay, if this is the game that they that the Liberals simply don't want to talk about the bonuses, Mr. then Kirk, at least be Mr. honest Kirk, about it. Mr. Kirk, a point of order. What is it, Mr. Nur Mohammed? Well, there are two things I would now say. One is that Mr. Kirk now knows me well enough to know that this is not about playing games. We did have, and we still seem to have some crackling on the audio, pointing that out. However, I did want to make sure that we are clear about what the mandate of Madame Tate's appearance was today, and I understand it was from the House order in respect of the... Uh, the cuts to the CBC, not about bonuses. I just want to be clear about what it is that the discussion today is supposed to be about. Thank you, Mr. New Mohammed. So, certainly wasn't a point of order. And again, it seems like the Liberals are terrified, like Ms. Tate, about talking about the $18 million in bonuses that were awarded to, uh, to, to individuals of the CBC. Now, Ms. Tate, in your opening statement, you asked for more money. Yet the last time more money was awarded to the CBC, it went to bonuses. As a show of leadership from the top, can you, and I'm gonna, this was asked to you before, and you didn't answer clearly, so I'm going to give you another opportunity here today. Will you categorically reject any bonus that is offered to you as your tenure as the CEO of CBC comes to a close? Madam Chair, there were a number of um, questions in that question, if I may. I heard that, and I really wanted to correct the idea. If the committee wishes, I can reread the motion. It is about cuts to CBC and the impact of defunding the CBC. That's one of the things that, that was clear. It was not about uh, it was not about bonuses because, if you recall, Miss Tate was here not too long ago talking about bonuses. So I think we should read that the. I will read it provided um, now, including how the Liberal threat to cut funding led to hundreds of CBC Radio Canada job cuts and the effects on smaller communities, as promised by the leader of the official opposition, and the consequences of defunding the CBC. That's clearly what the motion says. Thank you, Madam <coughs> Chair, and, and look, I think that it is clear that Ms. Tate, in her opening statement, asked for more money. And conservatives do not believe that if uh, the, the, the leader at the top of the organization is unwilling to make a commitment to say that they won't uh, uh, accept a, a, a bonus to, to what could be the tune of hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' money at a time when people are being laid off. The last time the CBC asked for more money, they paid out more bonuses. Ms. Tate, to you today, out of respect for the organization, that you've led over the last number of years. You, will you reject, if offered, a taxpayer-funded bonus? Uh, Madam Chair, I've appeared at this committee now five times, and I believe that I have more than adequately responded to questions about performance pay. I do want to correct the record. The funding that CBC Radio Canada re received, the $42 million, went to save 454 jobs of the 800 forecast jobs that were needed to be cut. So just to be clear, that money went to save jobs. So, so just imagine, you say that it went to save jobs, yet still $18 million in bonuses were paid out. $18 million of taxpayers' money went out in bonuses. Ms. Tate, your tenure at the CBC is coming to a close at the beginning of January. Um, will you commit to not take a taxpayer-funded severance at the conclusion of your tenure? Let me say just uh, to clarify, the $18 million was an obligation that the corporation had to the unaffiliated employees, the 1,180 unaffiliated employees. We have a payroll of close to $900 million. If the member believes that it, we make decisions about performance pay, in a frivolous fashion, I have to correct him. These dollars on payroll are put in place at the beginning of every year. So, so to suggest so, so, that, the, that funding that was provided 
in at the at the end of the year was used in that way is simply incorrect. So, so seventy one thousand dollars on average per executive. That's more than the average Canadian makes. Madam Tay, you make more than the Prime Minister makes, yet you refuse to reject a taxpayer funded severance. So again, I ask the question to you today, Madam Tate. Will you reject a severance paid for by taxpayers at the conclusion of your term as CEO of CBC? As I've told this committee repeatedly, I have not received performance pay since 21-22. And given the terms of my compensation, like all other GIC appointees, every president and a CEO of every crown includes salary and performance pay. I leave that decision to the government. But you could reject that today, yet you won't. So as we come to, how much time do I have left? You have minutes, but I was going to say, I think I've heard this question asked at least 10 times of this committee in the past. So Ms. Tate has answered it. Would you like to move on, Mr. Kuek? Ah. Thank you, and I will move on by simply saying this. I think that Canadians, and Madam Tate, you said in your opening statement that you speak to Canadians on a regular basis, and internal emails suggested that you sent and that were accessed by access to information, said that there's momentum growing on the defund the CBC movement. And your appearance here today, as has been the case over the last number of appearances that you've made, it's certainly not surprising as to why that is the case. There's a decreased trust in the public broadcaster, revenues are down, uh, uh, ad revenue is down, and most importantly, viewers. There are fewer viewers watching your programming. It is uh, as, uh, do you have any regrets, Madam Tate, over your tenure at the, as CEO of, this, of the CBC? Ms. Tate, you have 30 seconds. Madam Chair, I, I, may I address the untrue accusations of the member? Every media company in the country is cutting jobs. Our industry is in crisis. In our case, we forecast 800 cuts. And in the end, we worked hard to make sure that the lion's share of those were vacancies. 205 vacancies were cut. So I do believe that we're, we're talking about the, the wrong things here. Digital revenue has tripled since I began at CBC Radio Canada. Viewership is, in fact, up on digital platforms because, with, with, uh, with all due respect to the member, television viewing in general is down. So I would just say let us focus on the, the facts. I provided uh, all the members with this excellent document prepared by um, my staff on the facts around CBC Radio Canada. And I really urge you to spend the time to learn about Canadians' viewership behavior. They are online. Canadians are watching CBC on YouTube, you. on connected TVs. Thank you, Ms. Tate. It's a five-minute round for the Conservatives and Liberals. So, uh, Mr. Giovanni, for five minutes, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Tate, we've, you, we've heard you speak about uh, wanting more money from taxpayers. We've heard you talk about job cuts. I'd like to ask some questions about how your business, uh, the CBC, is currently operating. And with the billion dollars of taxpayer subsidies you have, uh, you know, the CBC has to compete with the private sector, uh, including in hiring talent. Is that correct? No. We don't compete with the private sector. We live in an ecosystem with the private sector. We are complementary to the private sector. Okay. That sounds like a fancy way of saying compete. So uh, now does that include having to hire broadcast executives and on-air talent in the marketplace or the ecosystem as you referred it to? For sure, there are situations where a uh, on-air talent might go to CBC, as they often do to CTV or to TVA. It is an ecosystem. People move. We want to have so, those kinds of opportunities for so, all our journalists. So to attract talent, would you have to uh, pay market compensation to people you want to bring into the organization? As I've said before, we um, aim for what we call P50, which is about 50% of market. So at no time are we trying to beat the market. We, are, we um, average the market. Okay. Well, you make about uh, half a million dollars 
and uh, plus you haven't ruled out bonuses, so maybe more than that. Um, would market rates mean that executive vice presidents may be on salary for over a million bucks a year? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not following your logic here. If you are competing in the ecosystem as you described mm -hmm. it, are you having to pay potentially executive vice presidents a million dollars a year? I think um, um, uh, the deputy Champoux raised this question with me last appearance when we talked about the compensation at Belt and at um, other um, Divya and other media companies. We are not paying anywhere near, as I said, we stay to about 50% of market rates. Gotcha. So could you confirm how many CBC employees may be earning in the range of your salary or higher? I don't believe anybody at CBC, Radio Canada, has a base salary higher than mine. What about if you factored in bonuses? Would there be salaries that would be comparable to yours? Uh, yes, there would be at the executive uh, vice president level. Okay. So um, would there be any indicators in your business performance that would cause you to consider that you might be overpaying some of your employees based on the performance of the organization? Are there any indicators that would cause concern uh, in your mind to overpayment for what the CBC is producing and what the outcomes are? Uh, the absolutely not. As I've said before, we do an annual review with the board of directors, with outside experts to check on that very question. We're constantly mapping salaries right through the unaffiliated groups to look at um, that, they're, that they are, as I said, at a 50 percentile. So just to confirm, as you're doing this mapping, there would be nothing that you could foresee that could make you pause and say, this would be a reason why we should not be paying bonuses or high salaries. There'd be no cause for concern that maybe people are being overcompensated with taxpayer dollars I, I at the CBC? I absolutely do not believe that people are overcompensated. If anything, we are not competitive in the market. So to the Canadian people who pay all of these salaries and fund the organization, you'd like to say to them now, there's nothing that could come on your radar. There's no data point that could come across your desk that would make you pause and consider maybe we're paying too much. Maybe the organization is not performing well enough. Maybe we have to restructure how we're doing things. Maybe we need a little bit of self-reflection on why the defund CBC movement is growing so exponentially. I, as I said before, the reason the board of directors made the decision to do a compensation review was, in fact, to make sure that all the information that we've been working with is, in fact, 100% accurate, and perhaps we should be looking at all the other ways to approach compensation. So there's an openness to change and to review, absolutely. But declining viewership wouldn't be one, declining revenue wouldn't be one, broad uh, public distrust of your organization wouldn't be one. It seems to me that the average Canadian taxpayer, maybe it would be fair to ask, what would you need to see to consider that the CBC is heading in the wrong direction and therefore asking for more money as you have done today seems not only out of touch but rather audacious? Let me be clear. Revenue, digital revenues have tripled. Um, CBC Gem, which was launched at the beginning of my tenure, now reaches millions of Canadians. So I think... Um, let's be clear. The 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 facts what about, that you're is ad revenue uh, is ad excuse revenue. Excuse, I think the time is up. But uh, I'd like Miss J to answer the question. Thank you. Digital ad revenue and subscription revenue are both up. TV ad revenue, as per all. Um, media companies is down or flat, depending on the market. It's actually down um, higher right now in Quebec than it is in the rest of the country. The, the country is in, in, you know, suffering inflation. So t uh, uh, sponsors and advertisers have withdrawn. But uh, quite frankly, to say that viewership and ad revenue are down, and those are the, the determining features of this last six years, is simply inaccurate. Thank you, Estate. Thank you.